What is up you guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Armand, Toronto-based lawyer, DJ, and car lover. And as promised, and sorry for the delay, this video is going to be an in-depth driving review of the CLA 45 AMG 2018 model from Mercedes-Benz. Now the 2019s, actually I was, I was just on Mercedes' website this morning, and they've uploaded the 2019 edition which sees, sees some revisions to the body styling in the front and the rear, but actually they have not changed the interior. Everyone was hoping they would get rid of the um, iPod looking or iPad looking mounted screen for the infotainment center, which is kind of stuck onto the dashboard. Looks like a little bit of an afterthought, but I've got to tell you, you get used to it when you're driving the car. It doesn't really bother, to bother you. At least it doesn't bother me. City's replacing a water main right in front of my building. Hey, so a quick question for you, man. This no is actually the next car I'm looking at getting. Oh, I yeah? like it. It's fantastic. It's I've had it for, 2018? Yeah, I've had yeah. it for two months. Oh, nice. The 2019s are coming, though, soon. Oh, are they? Yeah. So maybe nice. wait a bit. Yeah, true. Yeah. Awesome, man. Have a good one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> that was funny. So... Um, in terms of the body styling, actually, I must say, and I, I know I'm biased, but I don't actually like what they've done to the 2019. So I'm super happy that I got this car as a 2018 model. So what we're going to do today is uh, get the car warm so that we can uh, push it a little. I'm going to try and find some nice uh, twisty roads in Toronto or some straight roads as well where we can have a little bit of fun. Uh, living around downtown Toronto, there's not a lot of roads that are very that that good for uh, driving and performance driving, but we'll see what we can find. Um, and what I'll do is take you through the different uh, performance modes the car has in terms of its suspension and engine settings. Now, just as a bit of background on the car, uh, it has a four-cylinder engine. It's a two-liter uh, tur turbo engine. It's a twin-scroll turbocharger, and it produces 381 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. Now, Mercedes-Benz claims that the car can do zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds. Uh, car and Driver Magazine, however, on their website, actually has, re has posted a 3.8 second zero to 60 time, which is really impressive. Uh, I'm not sure if the average layperson can do that, absent, you know, perfect shifting uh, and, and uh, you know, racetrack dry conditions and maybe upgraded tires. But anyway, uh, even anywhere between 3.8 to 4.2 seconds, it's really impressive considering a Porsche, uh, you know, a baseline Porsche Carrera does zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds, and it costs about double uh, what this car costs. So now, I'm, of course, I'm not claiming that a that a CLA 45 AMG can handle as well as a Porsche Carrera. That's not the case. But the handling on this car is pretty good. And so we'll, we'll get into that. I'm gonna take you through the different drive modes that the car has to offer. And it actually has four modes. It's um, maybe one too many, but it offers comfort, sport, sport plus, and race mode. So I don't feel a lot of difference between sport and sport plus. So my thinking is maybe there should have just been three modes, comfort, sport, and race. But nevertheless, we've got four. Um, however, it's two-way adjustable suspension. So um, when you go from comfort, comfort to sport mode, uh, let me just see here, I think it's sport plus, it gives you the tighter suspension. But um, there's only two suspension modes. So while there's four drive modes, the other changes are going to be to the engine performance and the exhaust. Um, let me just see here, comfort is, yeah, comfort leaves the suspension, of course the suspension is in comfort, sport, brings the suspension, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't bring the suspension to uh, Sport. When you go to Sport Plus, then you get the Sport suspension, which is a little too rich for the very bumpy, horrible Toronto roads after this winter. Uh, but um, when you're on smooth ground, you're on the highway, it's really nice to be in, in the uh, Sport suspension mode. Now I do notice quite a fairly notable difference in the car's performance even between Sport Plus and Race. So uh, when I do want to drive the car hard, obviously I am in race mode. Uh, now the transmission, this car has the AMG Speed Shift 7-speed dual, dual clutch transmission. And 
Now that the car is warm, we'll throw it into race mode, coming up on a couple of fun curves leading towards the highway. Um, so I drive this car in manual mode most of the time. Now let's talk about the other basics. The transmission is paddle shift. Okay, you don't have um, any availability for buying this car in manual, at least not in Canada. I'm not sure what's going on in Europe, but um, the transmission is pretty precise and fast, especially when you're driving the car hard. One uh, criticism that I've got to say that I agree with, to be honest, is the transmission, when you're driving it in manual mode, can be a bit clunky and slow at lower speeds. Now, that you're not driving the car hard anyway, you know, who cares? But sometimes you'll see that the downshifts can be a bit slow. And so can the upshifts when you're not hard on the throttle. There comes a couple fun turns. I don't have the car in, oh, I do have it in suspension sport mode, good. And traffic in front of me, that's not fun. And a red light. There's just really not very many good places to drive a car fast in downtown Toronto. So we've got the exhaust uh, loud mode on now, which opens the baffles. I've got to say, I don't feel much difference. Whether it's... Uh, there you go, you feel these little cracks, you hear these cracks and popples as you, as you uh, shift the car. I don't hear a big difference in the noise of the car when I press the loud button. I mean, the car is a little bit loud anyway when you press on the gas, but when you're driving it, you know, comfortably, highway speed, it's pretty much like a normal Mercedes. Maybe a little bit more, it's more rigid, obviously, as an AMG vehicle, but in terms of sound and insulation, the car is comfortable, right? It's a Mercedes. Um, it's got plenty of insulation. The interior materials are very uh, nicely done, nicely finished high quality feeling and you don't get a lot of rattles and shakes you know of course this car is brand new that may change after three or four or five years but uh, the car is well built now most of this car's power is available in second and third gear I'm in third right now shifting up to fourth see I wasn't hard on the throttle there and that shift was a bit slow so if there's one thing that can be improved with the car's transmission, it's definitely to increase the precision of the transmission. In uh, all driving modes, that would be a big improvement to the car. I would love to see that be done. And otherwise, the transmission is a total treat. Uh, when you're hard on the, on the throttle, let's see here, I'll, I'll do a pull from third to fourth. Very fast. Downshifts as well. So we're about to get onto the highway here. Hopefully there won't be too much traffic. And we are in race mode and sport handling mode. One nice thing about the driving modes too is that you can customize them. You also have an individual mode or you can just use the buttons on the dash. So for example, if you want the car in race mode to have the benefit of all the speed and power of the engine, then you can do that, but you can also turn off the sport suspension so you can have the slightly more comfortable setting. So, uh, you know, the car, in terms of the ride quality, it does, it, it's a bit of a rough or a harsh ride. I'm not gonna say it's uncomfortable or rough, nothing like in a Porsche Carrera. Um, but it is somewhat rigid, but it's comfortable enough for daily driving, 100%. For trips, daily driving, you know, I've taken this car on some uh, two, three hour trips. I've been comfortable the whole time, no problems at all. So, let's talk now about availability of power when you're at highway speeds. If you're in sixth or seventh gear, Sure, the car is a bit a bit sluggish, right? This is not a 500 horsepower car. You're not going to have throttle response on demand in every gear or at any speed. That said, I'm cruising at about 100 kilometers an hour right now, or 60 miles per hour, and I'm in sixth gear. And if I downshift, if I just downshift to fifth, now the car still pulls. Not bad. But right, it's a four-cylinder engine, so you know there's going to be some limitations and you've 
I think you've got to have your expectations adjusted accordingly if you buy this car going in, right? For about a $70,000 Canadian car, um, you're getting a lot of bang for the buck. But again, it's not, you know, it's not a V6 twin turbo, it's not a V8, so you're not going to have, you know, jaw-dropping power at all cruising speeds. Um, as I said, second gear and third gear, they pull very, very hard. Um, they, pin, they do pin you in your seat, and uh, the power in fourth gear, even fifth, are, it, it's, it's noticeable. The power is available, but I would say it comes on around, you know, 3,500, 4,000 RPM. So if you, if you drive the car with that in mind, with, with you know careful gear selection, uh, it's it's a total treat to drive at, at all speeds. I've been extremely happy with um, the car's performance in, in really in every way, in every which way. All right, changing highways here. Now, one thing I would, another thing I would change about the transmission or sort of the interior of the car is the shift paddles. Now, don't get me wrong, they're beautiful, beautiful shift paddles. They have a great action to them. There's no wiggle or play. They're nice brushed aluminum. They feel really nice to touch and to, and to click in. However, they are attached to the steering wheel. Now, that is a big complaint of mine for performance driving when you want to shift gears while you're turning. I even notice this in city driving when I'm going to make a right turn from a stop and I've got the wheel turned all the way over and I want to shift from first to second gear because uh, first is a pretty short gear on, on this car. It uh, gets you into the high rev range pretty quickly even when you are uh, at low speeds. So, you know, within a few meters of rolling, you want to get on to your second gear and now the shifter is somewhere over on the left. You know, I've actually started to practice this and get good at it, like hitting the upshift with the right shifter paddle with my left hand when the wheel is 180 degrees. However, on a performance car, this is a bit of a hassle um, and a bit of an annoyance. Now, I looked at some of the other comparable cars in this category, and it seems that this is the kind of industry norm. Now I did a little bit of research with other brands and comparable cars and it seems that this is the industry norm. You've got the Audi RS3 paddles mounted to the steering wheel, not to the steering column, which would keep them uh, in place, which is you know, what you want when you're turning the wheel and, and you want to shift. So uh, another comparable car would be a BMW M2, uh, even the M3, again, uh, Paddles are mounted to the steering wheel. Alright, I think it's time to get off the highway here. So with, with that said, you know, it's not that this car is lagging from the competition, but it would be a really nice touch if they would move the uh, paddles to the steering column and keep them fixed, keep them stationary, uh, maybe make them a little bit taller. Uh, and that's, I guess you see that on you know, cars like, like Lamborghinis, I'm not sure about Porsche, certainly Lamborghini and Ferrari, any car that's in the supercar category, you're going to expect to see paddle shifting mounted on the steering column. So let's talk a little bit more about daily drivability. The car is four-wheel drive. I haven't owned it in the winter yet, but I'm expecting that with four-wheel drive and winter tires, even though the ground clearance may not be that great on this car because it's fairly low, um, it should be just fine in the winter. All right, let's get back onto Lakeshore Avenue here. Uh, exhaust sound. In terms of other uh, daily drivability, um, it's four door. Car. It's a four door car. Uh, the back seat room is quite limited, so I don't, I, you know, don't expect to take long weekend trips. Uh, I've had three people in the back seat already, and you know, it, it worked. But they were, you know, they were pretty crammed in there. Two people more comfortably provided they're not very tall. Um, I find the back seat because of the aggressive, dramatic roof lines of the, of the rear sloping roof. Um, this car has the pillar kind of coming close in on your head when you're sitting. If you lean towards
towards the middle of the car, you're a lot more comfortable. And I tend to do that when I'm a passenger in the back anyway, because I like to see out the front. Uh, so you can have your friends back there, but you know I don't I don't think you should expect to take five person long road trips or anything like that. Um, cargo space is good though; the trunk is totally fine. Uh, good for getting groceries. Good for um, you know moving around sports equipment. I've had a back uh, I've had a bike in there already with the seats down. Um, it'll be easy to put skis and snowboards in the winter. So this is a car you can drive every day by all means. You know, it's nowhere close to like being a, a limited, uh, you know, practicality limited uh, supercar. So um, that sh I don't think that should really be a strike against this car if you're considering it, except with the caveat of not loading the car up with five, uh, five people for long trips. Sick Porsche GT3, check it out. And an AMG GLC 43. Hello. All right, we are under the overpass on Lakeshore Avenue. This overpass is too high to really give you any tunnel sound. I'll find a better one. Oh, the roads in Toronto are just so bad. I guess our taxes aren't high enough. We can't spend any money fixing potholes. So when you do take this car into the corners hard, I must say that it handles pretty impressively for a four-door sedan. Um, it does not give you much body roll. Apparently this car produces one G of grip on the skid pad, which is impressive. And I'm just itching to get this car onto a racetrack where I can, you know, drive it in an uninhibited way without having to worry about potholes and other drivers and cops and red lights, which I keep hitting. All right, here we go with the tunnel. a quick driving review of the CLA 45 AMG the 2018 model um, I hope that's been useful for anyone who's considering buying this car overall my impressions are handling phenomenal performance more than enough for you know recreational performance driving I'll, I'll call it um, if I'm not going to a racetrack I'm not drag racing I don't need to have a car that's you know five or six hundred horsepower um, if you're okay with you know the highway speed driving not having you know uh, real spinning power available on command. Uh, this car is more than fast enough. The zero to 60 pulls are so fun because at, at that performance range, it's, you know, it's, it's really, really quick. It does pin you in your seat. It feels as fast as a Porsche Carrera. And the car is practical for daily driving. It's got four doors. It's got a big trunk, uh, German looks, German styling, beautiful interior.